Oh, that's so. so. Good afternoon. The Information Policy Census and National Archives Subcommittee uh, will now come to order. Um, without objection, the chair and ranking minority member will have five minutes to make opening statements, followed by opening statements not to exceed three minutes by any other member who seeks recognition. And without objection, members and witnesses may have five legislative days to submit a re written statement or extraneous materials for the, for the record. Welcome to today's hearing, a status report on federal electronic records management. Uh, my opening statement, which I would have made now, uh, will be entered into the record. However, I would like to address an issue that the minority raised during a hearing held by the subcommittee last week on reauthorizing the National Historical Publications and Records Commission. Uh, my Republican colleagues repeatedly questioned the accuracy of the information provided by a witness, uh, Dr. Ira Berlin, on his disclosure form. Uh, I had thought that we had resolved the issue during the hearing last week when Dr. Berlin answered the increasingly unpleasant questions directly. However, in a letter dated yesterday, June 16th to Dr. Berlin, signed by Mr. Chaffetz of Utah and Mr. Jordan of Ohio, the minority continued to assert that Dr. Berlin was not accurate and, com and completely forthcoming in his disclosure form and his testimony. Further, the minority asked the archivist of the United States, Mr. Ferriero, during the hearing for his opinion about duplication among grant programs, and the archivist gave his opinion. I concur with his opinion, as did the many expert witnesses who came before the subcommittee, that the NHPRC is not duplicative uh, of other programs, and yet, in a second letter, also dated yesterday and sent to archivist Ferriero, Mr. Chaffetz and Mr. Jordan suggest that the archivist was not accurate during his testimony at the same hearing. In both letters, the minority strongly suggests that the witnesses were not truthful and urged them to reflect on their testimony and correct it as soon as possible. Uh, let me state unequivocally and for the record that Dr. Berlin completed his disclosure form accurately and thoroughly. He has provided the subcommittee and the minority has received a copy with this information that confirms his form and his testimony was accurate and complete. I also want to state for the record that archivist Ferriero was asked his opinion and he gave it truthfully. The minority may certainly disagree with that opinion just as they may fundamentally misunderstand the nature of the NHPRC. Its critical value to this nation, the distinction between teaching at a university and re representing that university, and the differences among federal grant programs. But to suggest that either of these distinguished witnesses were anything but candid and forthright when appearing before this subcommittee is disgraceful. I think the minority owes both Dr. Berlin and archivist Ferriero, who is here today, apologies for the way they treated these honorable and widely respected witnesses. And now I will yield to my colleague, the ranking minority member, Mr. McHenry of North Carolina, Lana, to respond to what I just said or for, or for an opening statement. Well, Mr. Chairman, thank you, and I appreciate your courtesy in working with me on this subcommittee, especially on this important issue. Uh, I see that my ranking member is here. Uh, this is uh, an issue that I think was dealt with that, um, and would be better addressed by the ranking member, and so I'd be happy to yield to the ranking member. I thank the gentleman, and I join with the ranking member of the subcommittee reiterating that all we want to do 
is maintain the importance of this committee which requires all witnesses be sworn that they all make statements uh, as you know sign statements before they testify as to their truthful testimony and that we be able to check that for consistency last week I know the chairman is aware of this we were halfway through and people were still getting the paperwork right we ask for no more than we would give if the shoe was on the other foot and we hope to be held to that standard in the future having said that certainly we're, it's not our interest today to slow up our witnesses from testifying because of failures uh, previously so I'd yield back uh, the time to the gentleman I thank the ranking member and um, uh, thank you for uh, clarifying that um, and in the interest of, of what's happening today and the I appreciate the panel being here today we're talking about a very important issue that uh, uh, arch archivist uh, Ferio and I have discussed uh, personally um, and I know is of distinct interest uh, to him and his new position and much of what we're talking about now um, has a, a much longer uh, uh, time period that we're discussing than than you know the current leadership uh, of the archives. So you know, having said that, we want to talk about how we're going to move forward. Um, and uh, you know, I, certainly it's important that we have efficient and effective uh, uh, the archives efficiently and effectively fulfilling their mission uh, to secure our nation's records. I mean, in, in, in our history uh, can so easily be lost uh, by a misplaced uh, a computer file, a um, uh, records destroyed, theft, and all these discussions that, that we've had previously in this subcommittee uh, with testimony from the archives, from the testimony from the GAO, from the IG, the, and, and that record is there. It's established. We've had, uh, you know, millions of records lost. Um, and we want to ensure that going forward uh, we're able to keep records. Um, and archivist uh, Ferio was quoted on May 25th in the Washington Post as saying, quote, I think the Electronic Records Archive is probably the biggest, most complex, visible, and important project that uh, we need to get running. Citizens will be able to, from their home at any time of the day or night, access the records of government. All the agencies now are experimenting with electronic records, and our job is to make sure that we have created the, the capacity to ingest these records, keep them for perpetuity, and make them available in perpetuity. So that, I think, is my biggest chore. That might be an understatement. Uh, it's certainly a large chore, and that's what we want to discuss today. The GAO, GAO has highlighted uh, some of these challenges in recent reports and criticized the archives for failing to accurately disclose program costs, schedules, and performance. In addition to sharing the GAO's concerns, I think as we all do, I'm concerned about the fact that 21 agencies fail to participate in the archives records management self-assessment. The self-assessment is a critical tool for the archives to evaluate the progress of each and every agency as they transition into digital records management systems. I think this is a larger issue overall of modernizing our federal government so that we have a 21st century bureaucracy, not a 1920s bureaucracy. Um, and unfortunately, we've got the, bo the worst of both worlds currently with a quasi-digital yet quasi-paper uh, uh, management technique or lack of even management, period. And as, as I mentioned before, boxes of paper, paper documents fill dozens of the archives warehouses across the country. Uh, this is the records of our federal government and certainly important to the history of our country. Um, and a warehouse is, is susceptible to fire, flood, burglary, uh, and so many of the other challenges uh, uh, based on, on uh, just storing in that form. Uh, finally, I would say that even storing digitally, the question is, 50 years from now, how can we access these things? As a layperson and as individuals, um, you know, 20 years ago we had a DOS prompt. Nobody uses a DOS prompt anymore. Well, except a few federal agencies still, All right? Um, you know, Google didn't exist 15, you know, 20 years ago. I mean, the, the, everything is evolving so quickly, so the importance of getting it right now so that we can build on this is certainly very important. And I think uh, the American people should be concerned about this because it's, it's our history and our records, and we want to be able to look at our records today just as we look 
today at records from 100 years ago and the nice written correspondence with the squiggly handwriting. And we can look at handwriting and judge those things. We're in a different day and age. So uh, I'm interested to hear your testimony. I do think this is important. I certainly appreciate the chairman calling this important hearing and with, with his work uh, that we've done together on the subcommittee and his willingness to work across party lines. I appreciate that. Thank you. I thank the uh, ranking member, too. And I see that the uh, ranking member of the full committee is still here. And the two, uh, the two colleagues that wrote these letters, Mr. Uh, Chaffetz and uh, Mr. Jordan, are not here. Perhaps staff can find them somewhere, and uh, perhaps they want to offer up an apology uh, to the archivist as well as the. Uh, Mr. Ed Chairman. Ed. Yeah, uh, I yield. Thank you. Uh, we stand by our letter. We recognize that anyone's interpretation of the letter is subject to many things, but as of this moment, we still have inconsistency in the archivist previous testimony as to duplicate grants and so on. We don't consider that there were false statements, but they do need to be corrected for the record. Uh, I will be glad to, uh, to inform both members to uh, I, I, I come know in. That, that Professor Berlin did correct the record or stated uh, for the record uh, his involvement. And uh, if that wasn't sufficient, and, I, I, and here, here's the point. The point is that we should not invite witnesses here and then continually berate them even after they leave through communications from the full committee. Mr. So Chairman, I got the letters here, Mr. Issa, and I think it's inappropriate. Mr. Chairman, I speak for the full committee. The other two members do not. It is our intention to hold accountability while not berate any witness or have anything other than respect for their accurate statements, and if they're inaccurate, give them full opportunity to correct the record. We know that mistakes happen in live testimony all the time, and we have no intention of doing anything more than making sure that the final record is correct. So on behalf of the full committee, if anything was taken other than that from our letter, I apologize. Thank you. And, Mr. Chairman, I, I reserve the right to berate witnesses uh, if they're from BP. We will continue with the hearing. <laughs> um, let, me, let me introduce our, our first panel. Our first witness will be the Archivist of the United States, David Ferriero. Uh, Mr. Ferriero has led the National Archives since his confirmation last November. He previously served as the Andrew W. Mellon Director of the New York Public Library, the largest public library system in the United States. Uh, Mr. Ferriero earned bachelor's and master's degrees in English literature uh, from Northeastern University in Boston and a master's degree from the Simmons College of Library and Information Science, also in Boston. Mr. Ferriero is accompanied by Mr. Jason Barrett, who has been the director of litigation for the National Archives since 2000. He is a frequent public speaker on the subject of the federal government's obligations with respect to the preservation of electronic records. And he is an adjunct professor at the University of Maryland, which happens to be my alma mater. After the archivist, we will hear from Mr. Paul Wester, the director of Modern Records Program at the National Archives. Mr. Wester joined NARA in 1990 as a graduate student also from the University of Maryland. Uh, he has delivered speeches on electronic records issues and neighbor's strategic direction for federal records management. And our next witness will be Mr. David Wintergren, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Information Management, Integration, and Technology, and Deputy Chief Information Officer. He is also the Vice Chair of the U.S. Government's Federal CIO Council. Uh, Mr. Wintergren received his Master of Public Policy from the University of Maryland. Uh, a continuing theme. And our final witness on this panel will be Ms. Valerie Melvin, Director of Information Management and Human Capital Issues within the U.S. Government Accountability Office's Information Technology Team. Uh, Ms. Melvin is also a graduate of, you guessed it, the University of Maryland, 
with a BS degree in business administration. And, and I must I must chime in. I got I got married uh, two weeks ago, and I married a graduate from the University of Maryland. We are so happy that you married up. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Our is very it looks like uh, you're the only one who's not a Terp. Uh, and the, uh, un the university has connections to the National Archives. Maybe they might want to think about granting you an honorary degree. Uh, I thank of all, all of our witnesses for appearing today and look forward to their testimony. Uh, it is the policy of the subcommittee to swear in all witnesses before they testify. Uh, would you all please stand and raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you, and you may be seated. Let the record reflect that the witnesses answered in the affirmative. And of course, as you all know, you will have five minutes uh, to summarize your, your testimony, and your, your complete written statement will be included in the hearing record. Uh, Archivist Ferriel, please begin. Chairman Clay, Ranking Member McHenry, congratulations, and Congresswoman Chu. I am David Ferriero. I am the Archivist of the United States, and thank you for providing me the opportunity for the National Archives and Records Administration to testify about government-wide federal records management and the central role that records management plays in the accomplishment of the mission of the National Archives. The backbone of transparent and accountable government is good records management. To put it simply, the government cannot be open or accountable if it does not preserve and cannot find its records. NARA believes that across the federal government agencies can do more to fulfill their records management responsibilities, particularly with regard to the exponential growth in electronic records. NARA's records management approach is grounded in three principles. Federal agencies must economically and effectively create and manage records necessary to meet business needs. Federal records must be kept long enough to protect rights and assure accountability. And third, federal records of archival value must be preserved and made available by the National Archives for future generations. Most federal agencies need to do a more effective job managing their records and other information assets to meet their business needs, to protect or assure accountability for the citizen or the federal government, and to ensure records that document the national experience are preserved and made available for future generations in the National Archives. Agency heads and senior leaders must work with NARA, the Office of Management and Budget, and General Services Administration, as well as with groups like Chief Information Officers Council, the Federal Records Council, and the Federal Web Managers Community to develop the information technology tools necessary to manage electronic records in a cost-effective way. The technical challenges associated with developing the IT tools for electronic records management are not insignificant. The lack of effective tools today is due in part because heads of agencies and senior leaders across the federal government have not been held accountable in meaningful ways for meeting their federal records and information management obligations. The federal government spends $80 billion annually on information technology, most if not all of which create or rece receive federal records in some form. Developing cost-effective electronic records management tools that work and then integrating them into agency, agency IT systems is essential to managing this national asset. Over the past 10 years, NARA has developed a substantial body of electronic records management policy and guidance. The policy includes the first full revision of federal records management regulations in nearly 25 years. The endorsement for civilian agency use of Department of Defense electronic records management application, design criteria standard, the development of the records management profile, and associated tools for use by federal agency CIOs to help them think about and account for records management in enterprise architecture. And the issuance of federal records management guidance on topics such as managing web records, managing records in a multi-agency environment, and using email archiving applications to store and manage federal records. All of our electronic records management policy and guidance documents can be found on our website, archives.gov. In the past 18 to 24 months, NARA has been much more assertive in exercising its statutory authority in this area and reporting on its activities. However, work remains to be done by both NARA and the federal agencies in creating 
preserving and making available the electronic federal records that are part of the nation's documentary heritage. Our nation's historical record hinges on the ability of each federal agency to effectively manage their records. Heads of agencies and senior leaders across the federal government need to understand that the records and information they and their organizations are creating are national assets that must be effectively managed and secured so that the public can be assured of the authenticity of the record. Heads of agencies and senior leaders need to be held accountable for managing these assets. Not only is it required by law in the Federal Records Act, effective records management, adequate and proper documentation of the federal government's activities and transactions is good government and a necessary condition of an open government. To more fully explain the concerns in the electronic environment, my colleague Paul Wester, Director of Modern Records Programs at NARA, will discuss the resu results of two recent analyses completed by NARA's National Records Management Program. Thank you for the opportunity to appear today, and I look forward to answering any questions that you have. Thank you, our Ferio. Ferriero. Uh, Mr. Wester, we will, we will proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon, Chairman Clay, Ranking Member McHenry, and Congresswoman Chu. My name is Paul Wester, and I'm the Director of the Modern Records Programs at the National Archives and Records Administration. I'm pleased to appear before you today to provide a status report on federal electronic records management. On April 20th, NARA issued a report entitled Records Management Self-Assessment 2009, an assessment of records management programs in the federal government. In this report, we analyzed the responses to a self-assessment survey NARA sent to 242 federal cabinet-level agencies, their components, and independent agencies. The goal of the self-assessment was to gather data to determine how effective federal agencies are in meeting the statutory and regulatory requirements for federal records management. Based on our analysis and scoring of 220 agency responses, we rated 36 percent of federal agencies at being, be, as being at high risk and 43 percent of federal agencies as being at moderate risk in their records management programs. Earlier this week, NARA completed and issued a report entitled NARA's Electronic Records Project Summary Report Fiscal Year 2005 through Fiscal Year 2009. In this report, we detail federal agency compliance with NARA Bulletin 2006-02, NARA Guidance for Implementing Section 207E of the E-Government Act of 2002. In this bulletin, issued in December of 2009, NARA formally established a September 30, 2009 deadline for all federal agencies to submit record schedules to NARA for all of their existing electronic record systems. It also required federal agencies to schedule new electronic record systems as they are developed. By, September, by the September 30, 2009 deadline, NARA had received electronic record scheduling reports from 160 of 240 federal agencies for a 67 percent response rate. Of the reporting agencies, 42 percent were considered low risk. However, 25 percent of the reporting agencies were categorized as moderate to high risk agencies, having submitted schedules to NARA for less than 90 percent of all of their electronic record systems. 33 percent of agencies did not respond to the deadline at all. We are troubled by the results of this report as well as the self-assessment of federal agencies' records management programs. Even though, these, even though these are baseline reports, we are troubled by the potential levels of risk to federal records. Overall, the results are unacceptable. We and the agencies need to find ways to do better. Toward this end, we have undertaken a number of activities. First, we are working to increase awareness of electronic records management requirements and raise accountability for noncompliance. Second, in conjunction with an audit from NARA's Office of the Inspector General, we are undertaking a year-long study of ways to improve NARA's oversight of records management practices. We expect this work to be completed in June of 2011. NARA is also reviewing areas where it may be useful to clarify the direction in which the federal government must move to improve the management of electronic records. While we will likely identify others in the course of our analysis, there are two broad areas that we know we must examine now. First, we need to identify cost-efficient ways to ensure that agencies manage electronic records electronically and do not rely on paper-based record-keeping systems to manage electronic records. We need to transition away from traditional print-and-file record-keeping systems. Second, given the long-term, the special long-term preservation and access challenges associated with electronic records, NARA plans to identify ways in which federal agencies can be encouraged to transfer, pre transfer preservation copies of permanently valuable electronic records to the National Archives as soon as possible for safekeeping. 
If NARA is not actively engaged with agencies to fully understand the electronic formats in which records are being created and used, then, record, then records may be at risk. As part of its comprehensive review of records management practices, NARA will review options for mitigating this particular risk. As we state in our strategic plan, fundamental changes in the federal government's business processes and in the wider information management environment have critical implications for the records life cycle. Today, the federal government creates the bulk of its records and information in electronic form. To deal with these challenges and carry out our mission, NARA must provide leadership and be more agile in adapting to change in information technology and in the federal record keeping environment. NARA's role as the nation's record keeper is vital to the future of our nation. Without a vigorous, forward-thinking records management program, we risk losing the information that documents the daily work of our government and ultimately the history of our nation. We look forward to meeting these challenges and carrying out the mission of the National Archives and Records Administration in the years to come. Thank you for this opportunity to discuss federal electronic records management with the committee, and I look forward to answering your questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Wester. Mr. Winogren, you're, you're up. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member McHenry, and distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. The information age is providing tremendous opportunities for the Department of Defense to improve operational effectiveness through the accelerated and expanded use of information technology. Paper-based business processes are being transitioned to electronic-based solutions. And thanks to technology advances like service-oriented architecture and the advent of Web 2.0 tools, new information capabilities can be delivered much more rapidly today than we even dreamed possible a few years ago. There's an imperative to have information tools in place both to realize the power of information sharing and to address crucial informa issues of information security. Accompanying this pervasive transformation is the ever-increasing importance of electronic records management. And while the challenges that we encounter in implementing electronic record management are significant, we are committed to ensuring compliance with records management rules and regulations, as well as ensuring that records management solutions are transparent to warfighters, relatively simple to use, and aligned with business processes. We have policy and standards in place to address the life cycle of management of records and to ensure compliance with NARA policies. I'd like to take a moment and highlight our electronic records management application standard. This standard identifies the mandatory requirements for records management application software, leverages our joint interoperability test command to certify applications as compliant, and allows DOD components to procure and implement compliant records management application software. We're pleased that the standard was endorsed by NARA in 2008 and recommended for use by all federal agencies. Like all large organizations, we face several challenges in this work. The scope of deploying records management applications across a 3.5 million person organization, the need to also simultaneously ensure legacy IT systems are compliant, and the imperative of having a workforce that is trained and adept at electronic records management. While DOD already maintains trained record managers throughout the organization, information technology advances have shifted records management responsibilities from central records management organizations to individual employees. Consequently, our training efforts have expanded to ensure the entire workforce understands the importance of making records management an integral part of daily operations. In closing, we're committed to working with NARA to ensure we effectively address records management while simultaneously transforming the department. Thank you again for allowing me the opportunity to appear, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for your testimony. Ms. Melvin, you have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member McHenry, and members of the subcommittee. I am pleased to participate in today's hearing on the electronic records management in the federal government. As you have requested, I will provide some background on the roles of agencies and NARA and briefly discuss some of the challenges of managing electronic records. As you know, the Federal Records Act requires agencies to have programs and appropriate systems to manage information documenting government functions, decisions, and other important transactions. If such records are poorly managed, individuals might lose access to legitimate benefits, the government could be exposed to legal liabilities, and records of historical interest could be lost forever. Poorly managed records also increase the cost of responding to FOIA requests or litigation-related discovery actions and impede accountability and efficiency. Nonetheless, as we have long reported, records management has historically been subject to neglect, in part because it is not a core agency mission. A major challenge for agency records managers is to make the case for investing in records management 
in an environment of limited resources. Although agency heads are ultimately responsible for their agency's records, NARA has a role in improving federal records management through providing guidance, assistance, and oversight. In its oversight role, NARA is responsible for conducting inspections or surveys, conducting records management studies, and reporting the results. However, in 2008, we reported that NARA had not fully used its oversight authority as it had not conducted any inspections of agency programs since 2000, nor consistently reported the results of its oversight activities. Accordingly, we recommended that NARA implement a new approach to oversight that more fully used its existing authority. In response, as has been mentioned already, NARA developed an oversight strategy that included the Agency Records Management Self-Assessment Survey, which it recently reported on. NARA has said that it plans to use annual surveys to provide an overall picture of federal records management and to inform its oversight activities, including inspections. As weaknesses reported in NARA's survey indicate, giving priority to records management remains a major challenge. Effective records management, electronic or otherwise, requires investing time and resources to analyze the information an agency receives, produces, and uses to fulfill its mission. This allows an agency determine, to determine what categories of documents and information are records, and it can then associate its records with information that will help it find and use those records, and finally, dispose of those no longer needed. Electronic records are particularly challenging because of their complexity, ever-increasing volume, and decentralized environment in which they are created. In the desktop computer age, individual users create and store large numbers of documents, particularly email, and it is difficult to get users to distinguish record from non-record material and treat it appropriately. Even when electronic record keeping features are integrated into email systems, users may resist having to categorize every email they send or receive. In an ideal situation, records would be automatically identified and captured with little or no user intervention. Technology that aims to automatically categorize records is beginning to appear, but its effectiveness will depend on devoting resources to proper implementation in the context of established records management programs. As our work has demonstrated, Technology is a tool to help solve problems, not a solution in itself, however. Like any technology, electronic records management systems require careful planning and analysis of agency requirements, business processes, and information, along with the necessary management attention and resources to ensure effective implementation. The long history of records management neglects suggests that raising its priority will not happen easily. However, several factors could encourage progress. First, NARA's public scoring of agency records management programs could raise their pro profile within agencies. Second, greater recognition of the increasing risk posed by weak management of electronic records and information could focus management attention. Third, the recent Open Government Directive includes specific requirements for records management as part of its push to make more information public. This could help make records and information management a more central agency mission. Finally, congressional oversight, such as this hearing, could also help raise the priority given to this important issue. Mr. Chairman, this completes my prepared statement, and I would be pleased to respond to any questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Melvin. Uh, we will now proceed to the um, um, to questioning of the witnesses on the five-minute rule, and we will begin uh, with the gentlewoman from uh, California lead, leading off the questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I was uh, alarmed to hear about um, uh, the results of the NARA study uh, that 79 percent of all agencies are at a high or moderate risk of improper destruction of records, and the numbers are disturbingly high. Um, let me ask, does the, do, do you have the proper authority to carry out your statutory and regulatory responsibilities, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Wester, uh, and if not, are there specific legislative changes that need to be made in order to ensure that, that NARA can properly carry out its mission? Thank you very much for the question. Um, 
What we need to do in the coming year is conduct our analysis of our current statutory authorities and the policies that we have in place right now to see uh, what kinds of limitations we have with the authorities and policies we have right now to improve uh, records management. Um, my sense of it is there are things that we can do in the policy arena, in the guidance arena, and um, with uh, making agencies uh, more aware and publicizing the uh, different uh, aspects of uh, either uh, lack of attention or poor management of records within agencies that I think will uh, be able to help us um, improve records management within agencies while we're in, in the meantime we need to conduct uh, the analysis of our statutory authorities and the guidance and regulation that we already have to see if it meets uh, the, the needs that we see uh, as the National Archives as well as the needs that federal agencies have to better manage their records. So you think there might be some um, extra authority that you may need, but you have to do the study first. I, I believe that's true. And uh, I mean, because I noted that um, out of the 240 uh, federal agencies that were supposed to submit to you by September 09, only 160 even responded. What can you do to make them respond? And are we to assume that the rest that did not respond have even worse records? Um, I, I don't think we should assume that they have worse records. Some of the issues that we have with the agencies who are non responsive have. Uh, issues of uh, resources within their organizations that it kept them from getting the record the, the submissions in on time um, we have we've uh, had our staff following up on agencies who um, did not respond and we've subsequently gotten materials back from them but um, as our uh, reporting has helped do is raise the uh, issue within those agencies because a lot of the agencies have have found out from the publication of our report and the distribution of our report in the press and in other uh, arenas, they have found out that, uh, that their records management programs are not up to snuff and uh, senior leadership is, uh, within those agencies has taken a greater uh, interest in this issue and has helped to uh, highlight it and make uh, changes or increase the emphasis on these issues within those agencies to make those, uh, the awareness higher and that agencies will be able to um, devote resources to answer the questions in the future and help us be able to follow up on issues that arose from that survey. So uh, again, going back to the authority, um, what, what can you do to make them respond? And also, if you inspect a, an agency's electronic records program and you have a suggestion for change, what can you do to make them uh, respond to whatever you suggest? Within our current statutory authority, we have um, the authority to go into an agency and conduct an inspection, go in and inspect records, inspect how agencies are managing those records. We also have the authority to uh, make reports to Congress and to OMB, uh, both uh, to the oversight committees as well as the appropriation committees to make, uh, make those issues aware to, to, to the funding sources and the oversight sources, both executive and in the legislative branch. We also have the authority to continue to follow up on those reports and uh, make uh, reports to the public on how well agencies are managing or not managing their records, uh, following up on those inspections, and that's what we intend to do with the inspections. And, and what if they don't respond? Um, we, we, would re we would bring these issues to the attention of more senior folks in the agency and to the oversight committee and the um, appropriations committees. That's the authorities that we have currently. Uh, Ms. Melvin, you suggested that perhaps the authority that that DNR has has not been utilized to its maximum. Could you explain that? Yes, uh, I'm following up actually on a 2008 report that we issued in which we discussed uh, NARA's oversight and the uh, extent to which it had been undertaken. Our concern was that um, we believe that NARA has authority that it had not used fully, and we base this on uh, the fact that in recent years uh, NARA had not. Uh, conducted inspections uh, at the time that we looked at it in 2008. Um, they were perf primarily performing studies, however, we found that they had not conducted any inspections since 2000. Um, at that time, we made recommendations to NARA as far as um, in, in increasing its inspections uh, to look for opportunities to have a more comprehensive evaluation and provide a more government-wide picture. Um, we have recognized that they have now done the survey, and we would look at that as a first step toward moving in that direction. But uh, clearly, from our perspective, uh, we think that there are opportunities. Uh, we've seen that they've been really good at putting plans in place, but from the standpoint of actually following through to actually conduct oversight uh, through inspections in particular and looking at um, uh, more thoroughly, I should say, at what agencies uh, are, are undertaking in the way of records management is uh, something that we would, uh, would like to see more of. And how many of the 245 uh, agencies have formal record retention policies? And of those that don't, what can you do to make them 
make them get a policy, uh, Mr. Wester? Uh, most of the agencies, virtually all the agencies, have uh, records retention policies. The issue is the the uh, validity of those policies, given how old some of them are, how current they are, how much they, how well they cover different aspects of a changing um, records management environment, where we've moved from a paper environment to an electronic environment. Some of those policies have not kept pace with the issues that uh, those agencies need to confront as they manage their records. Okay, thank you. I see my time is up. I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for your testimony. Um, to Ms. Ms. Mellon's point, Mr. Wester, the follow-up, the inspections, will you, can you answer, can you respond to that? Yes, we're going to be launching an inspection starting uh, next week uh, with the uh, Office of the Secretary of Defense and the Undersecretary for Intelligence to take a look at um, uh, how email is managed within those uh, two organizations. So you're beginning that process? We're beginning that process right now. Okay. So, it, it, Ms. Melvin, to, to your point, um, how well has uh, NARA, in your view, implemented the recommendations of the GAO in order they, to move forward on they, electronic records management? On electronic records management uh, specifically, they have um, been working to implement our recommendations. Um, we have seen some implemented, but from the standpoint of our overall uh, recommendations, I believe the recommendations for the 2008 report are still in process, so mm -hmm. we've not fully seen uh, that they have been fully um, implemented at this time. Okay. okay. Um, Dr. Ferrio. Uh, thank you for your testimony, and we've had this discussion before, uh, that you're taking an agency that has um, some, some personnel challenges. We've got some good folks at, at NARA, and you've explained that. But there's a lack of motivation among a large group, and you have to, you have to change the culture. Um, and with electronic records archive, you inherited, I mean, I'll, I'll say that clearly, you inherited a problem here. Um, it's over budget, behind schedule, um, where, wh what progress is being made? Excuse me, uh, Mr. McHenry, you know, the, uh, let me just state that N NARA is building the electronic records archive, um, ERA, to maintain that small percentage of records that they receive, but this is not. Uh, the subject of the hearing. The hearing is on the Federal Records Act, not ERA. Okay. Well, um, okay. Uh, I, I, ho ho hopefully we can confine our questioning to the Federal Records Act. Okay. I didn't think that was a problem. I've, I've asked a variety of questions of Dr. Ferriero, and this is one that I keep bringing up. I just want to see that there's progress being made because... There will be a hearing in the future on... Okay. Right. Well then, uh, Mr. Chairman, you want to ask, ask questions then? I'll, I'll yield my time to you because uh, this is of interest to me in terms of progress being made and I didn't realize I was limited by the scope of, of the questions. Well, I mean, look, the witnesses are here to talk about the Federal Records Act. Okay. Well, um, all right. Well, uh, Self-assessment. You mentioned the self-assessment. The SEC didn't respond. Even the Congressional Budget Office didn't respond. How in the hell do we get these agencies to respond? Mr. Ferriero, Dr. Ferriero? The, for me, the self-assessment was the baseline that we need to move forward. As you heard, um, NARA has not exercised its inspection authority since 2000. And this was the beginning of a reestablishment of, of our authority. Uh, I will be um, communicating directly with um, agencies that don't respond. We're starting to get, since we have published the list, we are starting to get some responses from agencies who haven't responded with some um, reasons for non-compliance non with our direction, and we will continue to follow up with them. For me, the, the uh, self-assessment is, um, is kind of the beginning of identifying those agencies that are, are in most need of help and um, we need to focus on those particular agencies especially to ensure that they get the support and guidance that is available from NARA. 
Okay. Uh, do you lack uh, the authority to actually uh, demand, aside from basically, uh, you use the word accountability a number of times in your testimony. Um, do you have the ability to hold these agencies accountable? I believe we do. And I think I mean, you put yourself in, in the situation of, a, of an agency that hasn't had any, exer any authority exercised over them for eight years, and all of a sudden they get um, a demand for self-assessment. Uh, there's there's a, an attitude that develops um, that, that they don't take it seriously. And, and I would guess that, that we experience some of that in this process. Yeah. Mr. Wester, you want to comment on that? Um, what I'd like to say is that uh, we've, we've launched a new assessment for 2010 that we launched in the middle of, of May. And as part of launching the self-assessment for uh, 2010, um, the archivist uh, sent personal letters to each of the agency heads. And I have to say that the response um, that we have gotten uh, from the senior levels of agencies has been much more robust than it was uh, when we had done it in the, in a pre in the previous manner uh, before uh, Mr. Ferrier came on board in November. So I think we're making uh, great strides with the agencies in raising the awareness at the senior levels about this issue. Um, but as, as the archivist said, we need to follow up uh, with the agencies to, to make sure that they continue to uh, complete the self-assessments and more importantly continue to improve the records management programs. All right. I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cuellar of Texas, recommend. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, my, my, my questions are more uh, procedures dealing with relationships uh, with uh, agencies, uh, NARA and uh, GAO. GAO uh, has done a series of um, reports, uh, and I think they've been mentioned. Uh, the one in 1999 uh, where they recommended several things, including conducting a government-wide survey of the programs and the information used. And instead of using a government-wide baseline assessment survey, I think it was more limited in scope. Is that correct, Ms. Melvin? That is correct, yes. Okay. Then in 2002, there was another report, um, and uh, NARA came up with a strategy for a comprehensive report uh, on that. But um, uh, again, there were some issues there. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. All right. Uh, then, of course, we're looking at, uh, I guess, your current statement here also. And I guess my, my, I guess my question is, the report, I'm sorry. I guess my question is to, to, to the panel is, GEO comes up with recommendations, and then what happens? I mean, I mean the purpose is to improve the process. Uh, what, what happens? I mean, what, what, what happens? Uh, in, in the process when a report comes up from GAO. I mean, if I was one of y'all or part of the NARA, I would say, okay, I agree with the recommendations, so I don't agree with the recommendations, but if I do agree with the recommendations, let's see how fast we can implement it. Uh, who wants to be first? I will go first. Um, to talk about what we have uh, done at the National Archives uh, over the time period that you've described in relationship to the um, engagements that we've had with GAO. Um, what we've done is we've gotten the recommendations, we've uh, taken a look at how we can respond to them, and we've uh, made plans and attempted to address each of the recommendations that have been brought before us and have, have tried to make uh, strides in dealing with the recommendations and improving um, records management, electronic records management um, within uh, the government. Um, one of the things that has been a challenge uh, for the National Archives during this time period has been the, uh, the, the change of the records environment within agencies across the federal government. Um, when our work uh, began, uh, more or less uh, in, in 2000, which is probably the good marker to, to, to use for this discussion, um, we were in a, in a transitional period across the federal government where we had a lot of uh, agencies who were still uh, primarily uh, paper-based organizations that were increasingly using electronic records. Um, from 2000 on, uh, what, we, what the National Archives had to do was figure out how to address the increasing electronic records challenge within the government and develop guidance and policies and promulgate those guidances and policies and update our regulations to help agencies better manage or help agencies know what to do to better manage uh, their electronic records. So there was a long period of time where we spent 
um, a good deal of uh, resources on that issue. And uh, it's only been in the last uh, probably 18 to 24 months, perhaps a little longer than that, that we've gotten uh, a body of guidance and regulation in place that we're able to now um, hold agencies more accountable specifically to electronic records issues across the government. So it's, it's been a, as you observe, a, a long uh, journey for us, and it's probably taken us too long, but that is the, the path that we've, we've gone on in trying to be responsive to the issues that have been uh, brought before us by GAO as well as uh, the environment that we find ourselves in with the federal agencies. Uh, could I respond to that also? Yes, sir, Mr. As, Fed, as yeah. the head of the agency, I treat these reports as, as well as the reports from uh, my inspector general very seriously. These are, um, in lots of cases, early warning signs for me in terms of where we need to correct um, action. Uh, and I, as I said, th these um, reports have my full attention. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, and, and I guess, uh, and I'll close up with this, Mr. Chairman. I, I guess the um, in trying to improve the uh, process and get better results. Um, if a recommendation comes in and you truly disagree with it, because there'll be times that we're going to disagree. I mean, GAO is not 100 percent correct, just like we're never 100 percent correct. Uh, then, you know, I can understand you can go ahead and, and, and uh, have a dialogue on that. But if once you all accept the recommendation, you know, we're hoping that at that time that you all uh, as fast as possible uh, within, you know, the certain contours, implement that as soon as possible. Uh, if I can, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll just ask GAO, any thoughts on that? Whenever we make the recommendations, we are hopeful that an agency will consider them in the fullest. Um, again, our concerns had not been so much with uh, the fact that they were not planning toward efforts, but that we did not see the level of um, investment in those efforts, if you will, to make sure the, that they were. The, the, and I think you said, excuse me, the commitment, right? I think that's the term that you use in here, the commitment. We, we wanted to see definitely a greater commitment to trying to get a government-wide uh, look at uh, what was happening in, happening in federal records management. Uh, we did see the agency take steps, but steps that from our position were, fell short of what we thought were necessary for them to have the, the or to provide the necessary oversight and to be in, in a position to um, uh, influence agencies, if you will, to have better records management programs in place. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and I know it's difficult, complex, ever-changing. Uh, but I appreciate all the efforts that you all do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Ms. Cuella. Mr. McHenry, you recognize for five minutes. Uh, Dr. Ferria, just to follow up with uh, what we've discussed before, um, in terms of improving morale, uh, what has your approach been? What's the progress you've made? I'm uh, putting a lot of faith in the government wide employee viewpoint survey. And I'm pleased to report that 83% of NARA employees participated this year compared to 52% um, last year. Um, they got personal email messages from me. They got voicemail messages from me. Um, I did uh, video to encourage people to participate. And there, here again, um, we're expecting the results um, within a couple of weeks. And this will be another baseline for me in terms of just um, how bad things are in terms of morale. Uh, we have uh, established uh, a task force to help me work through these issues as we start getting the results to improve the environment, the culture um, of the uh, agency. It has my, my full attention. As I said before, this is the most important thing that I have uh, to worry about. Um, and we have to get this right in order to do everything else that the agency has before it. Uh, broadly speaking, so you, you served at uh, large institutions. Um, with significant tech